This is the SYNC 3 infotainment system that you're going to find inside of the Ford Bronco Sport. It's technically the same screen setup across the entire lineup with one exception, and that's factory navigation. So factory nav does require the Copilot 360 Assist Plus package. Otherwise, the layout's going to look slightly different. But if yours doesn't have factory nav, you can't just add it in. You'd have to use an iPhone or an Android device through Google Maps, uh, through Android Auto, Apple CarPlay to use Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze. And that's all done right through the system here, which I'll touch on once we get to the phone. But along the very top, you've got the home icon, what your current inside temperature is if you've got the fan going. And then if you had a phone with wireless charge, uh, wireless charge support on the charger, pops up there to let you know that the wireless charger is active. And then you can see your current time, your outside temperature, and then your current connection status as well. So when you remove that phone, that message goes away, which is useful. Your map setup is there along with media. If media was currently turned on, turned off. If your phone was connected, that would show up differently as well. And then from there, you've got a series of other options that are available. So clicking through audio sources, you've got the option for AM, FM, Sirius XM, and Bluetooth, as well as USB. So one nice thing is that you could connect through your through Bluetooth for your phone. And then doing that would also give you the flexibility of just going through phone and phone calls with Bluetooth instead. So you don't have to hook up through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, but I'll touch on that one once we get to the phone. But as you can see there, series of sources, you can direct tune to a station this way if you'd like. And then you've obviously got all of your presets along the bottom there. And as you can see, there's six individual pages. So up to 30 individual presets, which you can adjust that through the preset pages here. So you can go as low as six and then up to 30 individual presets as well. And then as you saw there, it's a mix of AM, FM, Sirius XM. So one thing to note is that the presets here cannot be deleted. They can just be overwritten. So you can't just have blank presets, but let's say if you wanted to tune to a station, 94.9 FM. Tuning to FM 94.9. There we go. So tuning stations. And then if you wanted to overwrite or save a new station, all you're going to do is just press and hold. And that's going to save that preset in instead for you. So it's very straightforward doing it. There's one difference in Sirius XM though. Well, I guess a few differences. So you've got the option of tuning this way to a station if you'd like. You can look at channels. So it's essentially going to be a little category view there. Sports, news, talk, all that fun stuff. And then you can press this little bookmark icon if you wanted to get notifications for a song or an artist. So let's say if you were on, let's see, let's go to something that's not, let's go to hit station. Yeah, there we go. Pulse. There we go. So let's say if you wanted to get a notification because you're a big Jonas Brothers fan or a fan of the song. So if the song or the artist comes on, you can get a notification to let you know. You can replay the song there as well if you want to, or hop in to any of these other devices. Straightforward. Now, from there, I guess next up is going to be adding in a phone. So let's go ahead and add in. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. What you're going to do is look for sync. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Pins match up. Do you want to allow contacts and favorites to sync? I'm going to say for no. Your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Perfect. 911 assist is available there as well. I recommend keeping that one turned on with a phone connected to your vehicle. And the reason why is because if you're ever in a serious accident, it's going to automatically dial 911 for you. And then do you want your contacts downloaded automatically? Yay or nay. From there, you've got your contacts. You can change phones, do not disturb mode. You can also do a long press and hold on the steering wheel button in order to be able to activate your Siri assistant as well. So short press brings up your Ford assistant, a longer press and hold, is going to activate Siri instead. So you can see there, Siri's popped up. So that's nice, you've got that flexibility. Now, if you go back home, the phone's connected, so you can see your basic information there. Now, one thing to note, as I mentioned, this thing does have support for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but it's a wired connection. Now, one thing to note about the wired connection is you also want to make sure that your USB cable has the data transfer icon on it as well. Because sometimes when you're connecting, it's not going to connect properly, and that's because you're not using a data cable. So there's a difference between a data cable and just a regular charge cable. So if you're ever trying to connect it, it won't. Chances are, it's your cable. But let's dive in. All you're going to do is plug yourself in the one side, opposite end. Plugging yourself in there. And CarPlay. So let's continue. Agree. You have to hit OK and agree there in order for it to work. 
do you want to allow CarPlay while your phone is locked? I'm going to say yes to that one. And seconds, you are fully connected and it's beautiful, colorful, full screen. Love it. You've got your current time, what connection level you've got, map application that was last opened, audio application that was last opened, miscellaneous app, and then you can go to an icon view, back to home, or you can just swipe in order to get through this instead. You've got your map, so which was open last, basics or search, and then you've also got what's going on with audio on top of that. But there are so many different things that you can do inside of this thing. So you've got your maps, as I mentioned, and that's going to be, so Google Maps support with no pinch to zoom, but you could look at your search, previous destinations. You can go plus or minus this way as well. Change up your different views there. There we go. Circle back into yourself, <laughs> perfect. And then back home. Google Maps is gonna be the same thing. So you pop on Google Maps there and nice, but no pinch to zoom capabilities to zoom in and out. You're going this way and zooming in and out that way instead. You can search for, uh, search for previous addresses or you can press there to look at things like route options. So if you wanted to avoid highways, toll roads, and ferries, you can do that. Change up your map colors. You wanna show traffic. You wanna adjust the volume, whatever the case may be. And then ways is the same thing. So ways, no pinch to zoom capabilities, but you've got a hot press to let people know about different hazards on the road back home. And then this thing supports all sorts of things for audio. So it's got Live One, which is a radio app. There's so many things. Zoom is available there if you wanted to. Podcasts are available, music, all that fun stuff. So there's a lot of options that are available through the screen there. So as you can see, I've got an upcoming notification there for my calendar. So I can click through and at four o'clock, I've got a rock and or roll and back home from there. Now, if you wanted to get back to the main sync home screen, you can push this button there to do it. If you wanted to hop back into CarPlay, you could push CarPlay, phone or maps, and that hops you right back in to whatever option you've chosen there or back to this little icon view instead. You can go CarPlay preferences to turn off CarPlay. So let's say if you wanted to charge up without using CarPlay, you can just toggle it off and you're going to see there everything defaults back to the factory option instead. You can then remove your phone if you'd like to. But straightforward, and I'm connected back over Bluetooth. So one other thing to point out, I'm actually going to go back into settings. I want to turn CarPlay back on to show you one other thing. And that has to do with your settings. So you're going to go to general on your phone, CarPlay. You're going to find your vehicle. You can forget it allow CarPlay while the phone is locked, or you can customize. So let's say if you're a fan of listening to your podcasts, you want audiobooks up there, and you're a big fan of using Waze, you can do a drag and drop to adjust it. You can also delete. Oh, oh, that's new. Rove, oh, it wants me to double click it. Uh, remove. So you can remove everything from the screen there, if you'd like to, to a degree, and it keeps it on the phone. So if you wanted to, you could then add these things back in. So it's added them back in. But if you have played around with this a little bit too much and you're not a fan of what you've done, there's a reset button, push that, reset layout. And that just brings you back to the factory default screen there instead. So I know that's quite a little bit of info, but that's how you set up an iPhone and connect CarPlay inside of the Bronco Sport. Setting up an Android is the exact same process. So in order to do it, if you weren't on the full, I guess phone screen, so technically I'm still connected to the iPhone, you could go change phone or under settings, up back into phone, view devices, and then you could look at the existing phone there to disconnect or remove it, or you can add in a device. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Okay, and then on your phone, you're just gonna wait for Bronco Sport to show up. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Pins match up. For your safe, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. There we go. And then if you've got multiple phones connected, you can set this one as the favorite. So it's essentially who gets connection priority. Do you want to download your contacts, yay or nay? And then clicking on phone, I've now got the Galaxy connected. So it's the same thing. You go home, you've got the Galaxy connected there. You can click through your phone to look at some additional options on top of that. And then similar to the iPhone side of things, Android devices are, are a wired option in order to get Android Auto. And it's the same thing. You want to make sure that that USB cable has data support. And as long as it does, you're plugging yourself in. Opposite end of the cable, plugging yourself in there. And we're just going to hang off for a second. Continue next on your phone and you've got to agree. 
And look at that. A few seconds in and we are fully connected. So as you can see there, fully connected. If you wanted to go full screen maps, you could push that if you'd like. Search for addresses, you can push there in order to see a ton of different options. So your route guidance options, avoid highways, toll roads, ferries, etc. One nice thing that I like about Android Auto, it's that it's pinched to zoom capabilities, super responsive with Google Maps. You can push this button to get back to your split screen, back to your icon view instead, back to the screen or full screen maps if you'd like to. But moving back to the split screen, you've got a few other options. So Waze is another map application that's obviously available here. But if for whatever reason, let's say if Waze isn't showing up inside of your vehicle whatsoever. So what you actually have to do, or if you're getting weird messages, I've put together a little walkthrough video that explains how to connect Waze and set it up properly if it's not working. So if this is happening to you or you, you don't see Waze on the screen whatsoever, check down in the description of the video for a walkthrough on how to use it. But you've got your Google Assistant there. You've also got your current date, time, all that fun stuff. Then if you wanted to get back to the Ford home screen, you could push the Ford button there in order to do it or hop back into Android Auto if you want to go that route. You know, very similar to the iPhone side of things, you do have some flexibility with the Waze itself. So what we're gonna do is click on Android Auto. So search for Android Auto on your Android device. You can look at previously connected cars. You can customize the launcher, Google dictation, and a few other things. But we're looking for the ability to customize the launcher, which you can do. So if you wanted to drag and drop some things around, you've got the flexibility to do it. You can also, also disable certain apps on top of that. But one thing about the Android side that's not the same on the Apple side is that this is not dynamic. So in order to be able to accept the changes, you essentially have to disconnect from Android Auto, relaunch for those changes to take into effect. So actually, let's just pull out, plug back in, and go back to the icon view there. And you can see the changes that we made are now showing up. So you have to literally disconnect in order to be able to use, or in order for the customization changes to take into effect. But it's still as nice you've got that available as an option. Hopping back home, you've now got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. But if you wanted to disconnect Android Auto, same idea. I'm just going to select that and it defaults right back to the factory options there instead. If you were to go back into your phones now, view devices, you've got both phones. So if you wanted to, you could reconnect to the iPhone if you wanted to for phone and media, for media as well. So let's say if you wanted to have one phone connected for the actual phone itself, and another one connected for media, you've got that flexibility. So you could do kind of a mix and match there. You can either be connected for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, but you can kind of do a Frankenstein connection for these other options. Or you can remove it if you want to. And same idea, let's remove the iPhone, and there we go. So we've got the phones that are disconnected, and then Android Auto, Apple CarPlay are still there, so you can remove it from that. Just to clean up the icon tray there as well. So as you can see, it's now deleted. Okay, next up, so that's how you set up a phone. Next up is factory navigation. So you've got the option of searching, menu, you've got your basic location, the direction you're facing. You can zoom in and out this way, set it to auto mode, and then you can also change your headings this way as well. Searching for addresses, you can look at history, home or work, point of interest icons, and things like that. One of the big benefits of having home or work address set up is that you can push the voice command prompt on the steering wheel and say navigate home, navigate to work, and it'll navigate to those saved addresses. You can also add in a series of favorite addresses as well. Point of interest icons are there. You can search for GPS coordinates, so latitude first, longitude second if you wanted to, or with us set up here, you could search for a point of interest icon this way instead. Let's go something, search for Tim Hortons, nice and Canadian of me. There we go. So series of options. So let's just select one. You can save it as a favorite if you want to, or you can just hit start. Obey traffic laws, be alert, and use voice commands while driving. There we go. Please proceed to the highlighted route, and then the route guidance will start. So you can push there in order to show how much time you have left versus the estimated time of arrival. You could mute out notifications as well if you wanted to, and then you can also cancel the route out that way. So it's very straightforward to do. And then search for addresses. You've got the address now saved in history, so you can delete it, or you can press again in order to be able to start. Please proceed to the highlighted route, and then the route guidance will start. Why, thank you. You can press the menu button there as well to cancel the route. You've got screen view, traffic list, navigation settings, some map preferences. So if you wanted breadcrumbs, which are useful because it leaves a little dot on the area of the map that you've gone to, useful if you're off-roading. 
You've got root preferences. So do you want the fastest, the shortest, or the most eco-friendly route? Do you want to use the HOV lanes? Let's see, do you want to avoid other things? So highways, toll roads, ferries, and things like that. The navigation preferences, whether you've got the guidance prompts that are going to show up for either a voice, tone, or just strictly a voice, or both. So you've got some different options that are available there. You can view routes as well in order to get to the destination. So you've got your route that's available there. You can look at a detour, search, where am I, point of interest icons on top of that, as well as your favorites. So let's say if you were to search for, maybe we want gas as well. Search for just a random one there. And then you can either start to go to a new destination or you can add it in as a stop onto your destination there as well. So if you've got multiple places to go, you've got the option of adding in multiple places. You can optimize the order on top of that. So which one's gonna be the best route to go in order to get to where you need to be. And then you can hit start. Please proceed to the highlighted route there and then go. the route guidance will start. And then you can just hit cancel, either next stop or the entire route as well because we've got multiple stops set up. So I know that's quite a bit, but that's how you use factory navigation in this thing. You've got a basic little app screen. So Sync 3 does still have Sirius XM travel link. And then you've got a series of different settings. So the audio right now is off, but clicking it back on, you've got some sound settings. So adjusting your treble mid-range bass. Balance, fade, all that fun stuff. Occupancy mode, do you want it focused on the driver or all seats? Clock, you could adjust the clock this way or along the very top, you can push the clock to get in. Do you want to adjust hours, minutes, AM, PM? Do you prefer that military time instead? So the 24 hour mode. Do you want to automatically have daylight savings time adjusted for? And then do you want to have your time zone update automatically? I have had some people say that if you live kind of on the border of a time zone, it'll flip you back and forward. So you could. Just toggle it off that way if you wanted to. Bluetooth options. You can Search add in a Bluetooth device. On your device and select it once it is found. You can also toggle Bluetooth off there if you want. You've got phone Search options. Your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Why, thank you. Radio's there and then a series of driver assistant settings. So you've got cruise control. If you didn't have the Copilot 360 package, you would have just regular normal cruise, but you've got the option of selecting between normal, adaptive, or intelligent. Adaptive is your set it and forget it cruise. And then intelligent cruise takes that to the next level. So let's say if you're driving and the speed goes from 60 to 80, it's automatically going to increase your speed. And it goes the same way. If it goes from 80 to 60, it's going to decrease your speed. But that's based on a tolerance level. So do you prefer to stay under or over the speed limit by how much? And that's going to go plus or minus as it adjusts for the tolerance level there. So that's a really useful one, especially if you have a heavy foot. There's a lane keeping system that works three different ways. So way number one, if you start to veer over into another lane without signaling, it'll give you a little steering wheel shake. So it's going to feel like it's vibrating the wheel for you. The aid is going to nudge you back into your lane and then the alert and the aid will do both. So it'll shake the steering wheel and it's also going to nudge you back into your lane. So if you're in your Bronco Sport and you're feeling vibrations, chances are good. It's not an alignment issue. It's just the lane keeping system, but you can toggle it off using the button on the tip of the left stick. There are some good safety settings like pre-collision assist. Do you want the vehicle to actively brake for you if it senses a potential collision? Speed sign recognition. When a speed, do you want to get a speed warning if you're going a little bit too fast, yay or nay? The blind spot system. So that's going to highlight on your side view mirrors if somebody's entered the blind spot on either side. With trailer sway to control turned on, if you're towing and then the vehicle senses there's sway going on, it's going to apply engine braking to get that sway under control. The rear parking aid. So that's the beeping that you get as you back up. You do have the flexibility of toggling that beeping off if you're really not a fan. Cross traffic alert. If somebody's coming perpendicular as you back up, so from the left or the right, it's going to tell you of a potential collision. And then you can also toggle, toggle off your traction control. Driver alert. If you start to veer over too many times with that signaling, it's going to tell you eventually that you should probably take a break. There are a series of basic vehicle settings, 30 minute max idle, otherwise, and then it's going to shut off after 30 minutes, or you can turn that off. Rear occupant alert. When you go to turn the vehicle off, it's going to let you know to check the back seats. My key gives you the flexibility of setting up limitations for the key fob. So it means things like maximum speed and a few others. Remote start setup. Do you want to be able to remote start? Yay or nay? And then when you remote start, what happens? 
Is the climate based off of your last setting or does the vehicle determine what the cabin temperature should be? Same thing with heated seats, heated steering wheel that was available. And then the duration of the re remote start. So do you want it to last for five, 10 or 15 minutes? got options for wipers. So courtesy wipe, if you've got your windshield wipers going, it's going to essentially go, it's going to wait for the end of the cycle and then go one more time to clear away any excess liquid. From there, you've also got your rain sensing wipers and then rear wiper went in reverse. So if you've got this turned on and if your front wipers are going, you put your vehicle in reverse, the rear wipers are also going to come on. From there, there's lighting options crazy here so auto high beam what that means is that later on at night your high beams are going to pop on automatically and then if a if the vehicle recognizes somebody oncoming it's going to dim them before bringing them back on again and then auto lamp delay when you go to lock the vehicle do the lamps stay on for 10 seconds 20 seconds 120 seconds or do they just turn off when you go to lock the vehicle and then other one is locks there's nothing overly exciting here with the exception i just recommend keeping these things on Big reason why is because let's say mislock chirp. So you go to shut the door, it doesn't shut properly. It's going to chirp at you to let you know. When you go to lock the vehicle, do all doors become unlocked or is it just the driver's door? And then intelligent access on the door handle. So as long as you've got the fob on you, you can slide your hand in the door handle in order to open it up. And from there, you've got Ford Pass Connect. So that's an app on your phone in order to be able to do things like remote start would be the big one there, lock and unlock the doors. There's a series of general settings. So you've got English, Spanish, and French available as an option there. Temperature units, Celsius or Fahrenheit. You can go kilometers, miles per hour, whatever the case may be. The beeping that we're getting here, it's gone now because I've turned off the touchscreen beep. So if that drives you nuts, you do have the flexibility of turning it off. I recommend turning on automatic system updates and then under Wi-Fi, connect to a network at home. And the reason why, like sometimes these updates can take like three or four hours to do. So at home, it's going to download it and then it'll automatically install for you just to make sure that you're up to date. There's a series of mobile apps that are available as well. Display options. So as bright as this display is, if you're not a fan, you can toggle it off if you want to. You can go into a calming screen instead where it's just got your date and time. Button press to bring it back to life. And then... You've also got a few other options. So you can adjust the background a tiny little bit. So these are just very subtle changes that you can make. You've also got different modes. So this technically is the daytime mode right now. I'm in auto. So you can lock it out permanently to the daytime or the nighttime mode. And then you can switch to auto. So it's going to automatically flip between day or nighttime, just depending on how bright it is outside. I personally am a big fan of that blue though. So I would leave it there myself. From there, you've got options for voice. So pushing the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, you've got the voice command list there and you can do a ton of things. Phone confirmation, do you wanna call such and such person, yes or no? And then advanced mode means that you won't get as many notifications. From there, there's also valet mode. So you enter in a four digit number, not 0000, do something harder, but that's going to lock the screen out until you re-enter that password again. So very good safety setting. I normally just recommend keeping that one on. And then navigation settings, which we've seen earlier. So I know that's a lot of information and there's only one other thing that I'm going to point out is that if you're ever getting any issue with the screen, so Android Auto or Apple CarPlay aren't working, factory navigation's not working, the screen's turned off and it's just not turning back on again, you can reset the screen. So you can do a soft reboot. All you're going to do is push and hold the volume button and the right seek button there for about five to 10 seconds. So you're just going to press and hold. These things are going to go nuts, but just wait a second there. And there you go. So the screen's rebooted itself essentially. So it's a soft reboot. It's going to replay the little welcome screen message there. And then it's going to take a second to re-index everything. And then you're set to go. So if you ever, like I said, run into any issues with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth, if the navigation's not working properly, it's giving you funky messages, push and hold volume and the right seek button for a few seconds, like five to 10, in order to reset the screen out. It's gonna go crazy for a second, reset to zero. There we go. And we are good to go. There we go. So that's how you reset the screen. Oh, is this just gonna keep on going wild? <laughs> 
go. All right, so you are fully set to go there. The screen has been reset. So I know that's a lot of information, but that's everything you need to know about the Sync 3 infotainment system inside of the Bronco Sport.